Romans chapter 6 Our New Identity in Christ If we believe in the right doctrine, then we are now able to live a life of service to God. Satan knows that if we believe that the body of Christ began in Acts 2 that we will put ourselves back under the law, activate sin in our lives, think water every time God says baptized, and be functionally useless in our service to God. But if we believe that the body of Christ began with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus in Acts 9 then we will understand his distinct apostleship, be spiritual, and be useful to God now and in the future, 1 Cor. 1437. See chart on page 59. 6 colon 1 14 How shall we then live? If Christ's righteousness abounds more than Adam's sin, should we sin more so grace abounds more? God forbid! And no, God did not save us to sin, but to give us Christ's life so we can serve Him. We are dead to sin, set free from sin, and should no longer live in sin. We are dead to sin, 6 colon 1 2, but alive unto God, 6 colon 3 11, through our Lord Jesus Christ, so we can live a life of service to Him. Paul explains our spiritual identification with Christ upon salvation. Know ye not, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. 6 colon 3, 4 We have been baptized into his death, our old man that we had when we were in Adam was crucified. Buried with him, our sin put away. Raised with him in newness of life. The power of sin in our life is broken as we walk in newness of life, not our life, his life, under grace, not the law. We now have the new man, Christ's spirit, F. 423, 24, Colossians 3 verse 10. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 6 colon 6. The only remedy for the old man is destruction by crucifixion, he cannot be reformed. He died once. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. 6.11 We know that Christ was raised from the dead, and he is in us. We are to know, reckon, and yild to what God said. We know we are dead to sin and have been identified with his death, burial, and resurrection, DBR. We reckon or count on what God said about us as true. It was a spiritual operation so we did not feel it, Colossians 2 verse 12. We yield our members, our bodies to God, 12 colon 1, 2, for his life to live through us in service to him as his heaven-bound people. Therefore, decide to no longer allow sin in your life, just say no to sin. Yield yourselves as servants to God, as those who are alive from the dead. We were useless to God before we were saved, now we use our body as instruments of righteousness. Do not let sin rule you because you are not under the law that activates sin, but under grace, 614. By his grace we have his son's life operating in us, so serve God out of love as sons. As children, we obeyed our mortal fathers out of fear of punishment, but when we became adults we obeyed them out of love knowing what was right and did not need the rules. We should not want to go back to being under the rules. We walk by faith in his words to us, Romans to Philemon, and the rest of the Bible knowing it was not to us but for our learning. 6 colon 15 23 What then? Shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. 6 15 Shall we sin because we are under grace? God forbid because if we serve sin then sin will be our master and we will die functionally to God, but his spirit in us is obedient unto righteousness. You used to serve sin, but then you obeyed, believed from the heart, the form of doctrine Christ through Paul gave for his heavenly people. You are free from sin and servants unto righteousness. Living by faith in Christ's doctrine that Paul delivered to us is the solution, 617. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. 618. Paul makes his point clear as he asks the questions men would pose and he may have heard. Decide to serve righteousness, yield to his spirit in you, not your flesh. When you serve sin you were free from righteousness, and your fruit was shameful and dead. But now, being free from sin use your body to serve God in righteousness having fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life, 622. Serving sin results. In functional death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, 623.
We cannot produce any fruit of righteousness that pleases God without the life of Christ working in us and understanding the indoctrination form of doctrine Christ gave us through Paul, Gal. 5 23 Do God's will and serve him and reap eternal rewards, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, 4 colon 8, because the wages of sin, activated by the law, is functional death. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8 verses 6 to 8. Romans chapter 7 Our new problem in the flesh. We are dead to the law, a dead man cannot be brought to trial, but we still have the no good sinful flesh in our bodies. This is very useful information to know because otherwise, we would wonder why we still sometimes sin after we are saved. I recommend reading this chapter in our Romans commentary. The law can condemn a man and activate his sinful flesh and render him not functional for service to God. Paul speaks of this struggle in Galatians 5 verses 16 to 26. 7 colon 1 dash 6 Paul uses himself as an example of what happens to a believer if they try to live by placing themselves back under the law. The law had dominion over us when we were in Adam. We are dead to the law by identification with his DBR and no longer married to it. Christ set us free so we can be joined to him. Serve righteousness in the newness of the spirit, not by trying to keep the law. 7 colon 7 dash 25 The law revives the dead sin nature. Paul uses himself as an example to help believers avoid the pitfall of the Galatians. Paul said that he was functionally alive under grace at one time, but when he put himself back under the law he became functionally useless or dead to God. There was nothing wrong with the law, it was holy, just, and good, 712. The problem was that the law made the dead sinful flesh that resided in Paul and us revive and become exceeding sinful, 713. He did not do the good things he wanted to do, and the evil things he did not want to do, he did. Paul delights in the law of God, his doctrine, but he sees another law in his mortal flesh, carnal, body, the law of sin. The sinful flesh in him wars against the spirit in his mind to take him captive. Who can free him from this functional death? Exasperated, he cried out in self-frustration, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death, sin that dueleth in me? 717. 724, then he answers his own question and continues to answer it in chapter 8. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh. The law of sin, 725. Thankfully, we are joined to Christ and receive his spirit upon salvation. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, one core. 617. His doctrine in our minds, F. 423, and hearts help us live right. The law activates the sinful flesh and makes us functionally useless to God. To walk in our old man is contrary to who God has made us in Christ. We cannot serve God in our flesh. Paul, our apostle. Romans chapter 8 Our new power in the spirit. Because of Christ's spirit and life in us we can live on a higher plane above sin and self. We are now operating under a new law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus which has made us free from the law of sin and death, 8 colon 1, 2. We have the ministration of life in Christ and are no longer under the ministration of condemnation and death of the law. He reaches his crescendo, climax in chapter 8. 8 colon 1 dash 17 There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. 8 colon 1, 2 The law condemned us, it is a ministration of death that activates our sinful flesh. But there is another law for the Believer the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is a ministration of life. We walk in the spirit when we follow the doctrine Christ delivered to us through Paul, 617. We are dead to sin, 6 colon 2. When we walk after the spirit the law cannot condemn us for we have victory over the flesh. The power of the flesh over the soul has been severed, cut, separated, but the sinful flesh still resides in our mortal bodies and can be activated or revived by the law, 711. Man often does what he is told not to do. When the sign says wet paint do not touch, we touch. 
the law said you fail to measure up to God's high standard. His life, spirit, in me bypasses the law. Because we could not keep the law, God sent his son who did keep it perfectly. Christ condemned sin in his flesh, puts sin to death, 8 colon 3. When we walk not after the flesh but the spirit, then we have the righteousness that the law was meant to produce, 8 colon 4. His spirit, his life in us, his righteousness has made us free from sin and death. His spirit works in us as we let his word rightly divided dwell in us richly, Colossians 3 verse 16. We have received his spirit so we can understand the truth of his word that Christ gave to Paul. To be carnally minded, like the unsaved, is to be functionally dead. I found that when I mixed Peter and Paul and thought they preached the same thing to the same audience and that the body of Christ began in Acts 2 instead of Acts 9 that I did not have the fruit of the Spirit in my Christian life, Gal. 5 23 But after I divided mystery from prophecy, Christ's message to IIS heavenly people from his message to his earthly people, then the Spirit of Christ in me produced fruit for his glory. We are useless to God when we walk after the flesh, but we are useful to God when we are in the Spirit. Without the Spirit of Jesus Christ in us we are unsaved, 8 colon 9. We are useful when we are in the Spirit, walk by faith in the doctrine given to Paul for us. The Spirit takes over so the power of the sinful flesh is broken, and we are functionally alive unto God. And if Christ be in you, the body, the body of the sins of the flesh, Colossians 2 verse 11, is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. 8, 10, 11. If Christ is in us, who we were in Adam, is dead, but his righteousness, his spirit is life. Christ's spirit in our present mortal bodies energizes us to be functionally useful to God now, philosophy. 2.13, not just in heaven in the ages to come, f. 2.7. You do not owe the flesh anything, because if you live after it you will die and be functionally useless to God, 8.12. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify, put to death, the deeds of the body, sinful flesh, ye shall live. 8.13, the deeds of the flesh are mortified when we are in the Spirit. Let his Spirit in you put to death the sinful deeds of the body and live unto God. Turn off the TV and study the Bible RD so you can serve God and have a better eternal position in heaven. We must choose to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. We live by faith in the words that Christ gave to Paul. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. 8.14 We are sons of God and able to work in the family business when we are in the Spirit. As a child, we obey our parents out of fear of punishment, but as adult sons, we obey out of love and respect. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit of the Son of God's love for his Father, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 8.15 The spirit of bondage is the spirit of fear of punishment that the law produces. The law was bondage and before we were saved we could not keep it, but after we are saved we naturally keep it, 1 Tim. 1 colon 9. It is when we live in the Spirit that we have the mind of Christ. 1 Cor. 2.16. We have already received the Spirit of adoption, we have the Spirit of adoption, but our actual son placement or adoption will take place after the rapture. At the judgment seat of Christ, we will be evaluated for job placement in the family business. With his son's Spirit in us, we can intimately cry Abba, Father, and call the Holy Father our Daddy. The Father loves us too. We have a personal loving relationship with the Father. The Spirit itself testifies witnessing to our spirit that we are His children and if children then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him that we may be also glorified together. 8 16, 17 How? Do we suffer with him? We suffer because we live in a fallen body in a fallen sin-cursed world, Ackle. 9-11, Gal. 1-4, but mainly for proclaiming Paul's doctrine. We suffer because we want people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth as we have, 2 Tim. 3-12. We suffer with him because the world hates him and will not have anything to do with him, his message, or his followers. We suffer because he just wants the best for his creatures and loves them, but they reject him and his word rightly divided. 
we will receive glory along with his glorious, exalted Son as his joint heirs. 8 colon 18 25 For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The things we suffer for Pauline doctrine in this present time, the dispensation of grace, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, what his spirit in us did. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. 819 All living things are waiting to find out who the sons of God are. Once the sons of God in mystery and prophecy, John 1 verse 12, even angels, Job 38 verse 7, have been revealed, then the creatures, animals, that were subject to the sin-cursed corruption of the ground, Genesis 3 verse 17, because of Adam's sin, will be aided and restored along with all creation. For we know that whole creation groaneth and traveleth in pain together until now. 822, all creation is groaning with labor pains to be restored and restituted to God's perfect creation, a new heaven and a new earth. And not only they, the creatures, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body, rapture. 8.23 We groan trying to get his message of the mystery out to a fallen world, in a fallen body. We, sons of God in mystery who have received the first deposit of the Spirit are waiting for our adoption, placement into our heavenly jobs. We are saved from despair because of the hope, earnest expectation, that God will redeem our bodies at the rapture and our heavenly rewards for His glory as we live to serve Him. We do not see our places in heaven but wait patiently. 826, 27 Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself mocketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit also helps us in our infirmities, weaknesses, for we do not know yet what to pray for so we can serve Him as mature, useful sons of God. The Spirit intercedes and searches our hearts knowing God's will. He helps us serve God according to His purpose. Paul had not received the entire revelation of the mystery yet, but as he received more revelation he knew how to pray, f. 1 colon 15 dash 23, 3 colon 14 dash 21, philosophy. 1 colon 9 dash 11, 4 colon 4 dash 9, Colossians 1 verses 9 to 20. We have a complete Bible. God will gather heaven and earth into one, f. 1 colon 9, 10. 8 colon 28 dash 30 and we know that all things work together for good, the will of God, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. 8 colon 28 dash 30. God uses the sufferings of this present time to mature us and prepare us to serve Him now and in heaven, 2 Cor. For 17, 18, 1 Tim. For colon 8, God foreknew and purposed that He would have a group called the body of Christ to serve in heaven with Him. He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, f. 1 colon 4, God decided to give them His Son's Spirit. The Godhead had predetermined that His heavenly group was to be conformed to the image of His Son. The doctrine, his mind, conforms us to his glory. God did predestinate us, the body of Christ, to be conformed to his Son and to live in heaven. He called us by the gospel, justified us, and will also glorify us. 2 Thess. 2.14 We have the glory of his Son's life in us now, ready to be revealed in our new bodies at the rapture. 8.31-39 What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Answer, no one can take his imputed righteousness from us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 832, God spared Abraham's son Isaac, but he already gave us his son and delivered him to die for us all, so will he not surely freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. 833, the saved Gentiles, the body of Christ, are God's elect and the Father decided to declare us righteous. Who can then justly bring a legal accusation against God's elect? God chose to save the body of Christ, but he did not determine who would be saved. We have free will to decide to believe or not. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also mocketh intercession for us. 834. No one can condemn the believer. 
The answer to man's sin problem is sitting on the right hand of the Father. His very presence there makes intercession for us. His scars are evidence that his redemptive work is done. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? For thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 836. No one can separate us from the Son who gave himself for us and rose. We are killed all the day long for the cause of Christ. The world does not want him, his message, or us. But we keep trying to save them and help them to come to the knowledge of the truth so they can understand what God's word says. Satan views us as sheep for the slaughter, PSA. 44 colon 22. But we are more than conquerors that put their feet on their enemies' necks. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us, 837. Paul is persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, 8 colon 36 39. Not even another creature, Satan or evil angels, or ourselves can unsave us. God loves his son more than anything and we are in him. Once saved, always saved. Chapter 9 to 11 Summary Paul explains God's righteousness and sovereign wisdom in his election of the Gentiles, 833, and the little flock to fulfill his purpose. Paul tells the believers what has happened to Israel. Israel has fallen for a season because they went about to establish their own righteousness. Salvation has temporarily gone to the Gentiles. Through Paul, Christ explains his dispensational change and that Israel's program has been suspended. Chapter 9, Christ came to Israel but was rejected, 9 colon 1 5, but a believing remnant of Israel was saved, Peter's group, the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32. Was God unrighteous to set Israel aside? 9 14, no, God can show mercy to whom he will. If God decides whom he hardens, then how can he fault anyone? Shall a Jewish man question his maker's decision? He will make a vessel of honor of the believing remnant of Israel. He declared apostate Israel to be in dishonor after being patient with them. Apostate Israel stumbled by not recognizing Jesus Christ. God chose to show mercy to the believing Gentiles and the believing remnant of Israel, 924, 27. Chapter 10, Israel's spiritual stumbling and present salvation opportunity explained. Paul's heart's desire is for Israel to be saved. Israel's problem was that they thought they could keep the law. They had no idea of God's perfect high unattainable standard which only the Son of God could keep. For they being ignorant God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. 10 colon 3. Paul went throughout the Roman Empire to inform the dispersed of Israel about God's dispensational shift. He let them know that they can be saved into the body of Christ by believing Paul's gospel to the Gentiles. But in this dispensation, the Jews are not above the Gentiles. God will save anyone that believes that God raised his son after his satisfactory payment, 3 colon 22-26. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 1017, Peter's group preached the truth to them. But now God was found by the Gentiles who did not seek to be righteous, but just believed in him. While Israel remained disobedient, 10 colon 14-21. Chapter 11, Israel's present state and future hope, delayed. Israel's present fall, temporary casting away, and partial. Blindness, 11 colon 1 25. They can be saved by faith as Paul was. God saved a remnant of Jews, Peter's group. Since the little flock is not accepting any new converts, they are diminishing. Paul said, through their false salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy, 11.11. The fall of Israel was prophesied, Luke 2 verse 34, but not the mystery, salvation going to the Gentiles apart from Israel. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? All believing Israel will be saved at Christ's second coming, 11.26-29. In his grace, God's present purpose is to save a group to live in heaven. God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. 1132, Romans chapter 9 What happened to Israel? Israel fell. 
God is presently showing mercy to the Gentiles and giving them an opportunity to be saved. God had saved a remnant of Israel, Peter's group. Election. Paul primarily writes about nations in these chapters 9 to 11, not individuals. Election has to do with fulfilling God's purpose, not individual salvation. Election is for service, not salvation. God elects certain nations for his purpose. God's purpose was to bring in his son, the Redeemer, into the world and save two groups of people. God's purpose stands not because someone worked for it, but because God decided to call them. God even used Pharaoh for his service, he uses Satan, and he will use Antichrist for his purpose. Paul explains how God turned from his chosen people, the nation Israel, to save the Gentiles. Gentiles are all nations. God makes decisions of election depending on his purpose. Esau is Edom. Genesis 36 verse 8. Jacob is the Lord's. Ja. 51 colon 19. God is using even us. 924 for his purpose. 9,1-5 Paul explains that God was righteous to elect to show mercy to the Gentiles. After mentioning that the believing Gentiles are the elect of God, 8,33, and the security saved Gentiles have because of the love of Christ, 8,35-39, Paul laments over the fall of the nation of Israel. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. 9,1-3 Paul has great heaviness of heart and continual sorrow because God has put Israel aside to save the Gentiles to the point that he could wish he was accursed, separated from God, that he would never have been saved in Acts 9, and remained cut off from Christ so that his unsaved Jewish kinsmen according to the flesh would still be the favored privileged nation of God. Unbelieving Israel is accursed, separated from Christ. Paul could wish it was the other way around. Paul knows that God interrupted his dealings with Israel and began a new dispensation with him. Grace is now abounding to the chief, leader, of sinners. Paul knows that when God saved him on the road to Damascus that he began a new creature or group of believers to live in heaven. In this group, all are one and neither Jew nor Gentile, Gal. 328, what matters today is to be part of the new creature, Gal. 615, Paul knows that he was the first sinner saved, placed, into the body of Christ. He is a pattern for the sinners who will hereafter believe on him to life everlasting, 1 Tim, 1 15, 16. But Paul cannot tell God what to do. God decided to temporarily cut off the nation of Israel, Luke 13 verse 9, but a remnant of Israel was saved and then put on hold, Gal, 2 colon 7-9. Moses asked something similar, for God to forgive those that worshipped the golden calf. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin dash, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Exodus 32 verse 32. God let Moses know it was not for him to choose, God will determine how he judges. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Exodus 32 verse 33. But God has mercy on whom he will show mercy, 9.15, Exodus 33 verse 19. Paul lists eight of the advantages that Israelites had the last being that Christ came in the flesh as one of them, Gal. 4 4. The covenants all belong to Israel and most covenants are what God on his part will do for them. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, as sons of God, John 1 verse 12, and the glory, preferred nation, and the covenants, all the covenants belong to Israel, f. 2 12, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. 9 4, 5. Paul is explaining God's dispensational shift. 9,6-13 The word of God had taken effect in the remnant of believers in prophecy throughout history. Just because someone is born an Israelite of the seed of Abraham does not mean they are his people. His people are the children of promise, spiritual believers in Israel who received his imputed righteousness. Those who are born Jews physically are not the children of God. His children are those of the remnant of Jews with faith in God. These have faith and are counted as a seed just as Abraham and Sarah believed God's promise of Isaac's timely birth. Paul demonstrates God's foreknowledge in election. 
By grace, God chose to make his nation from Abraham and promised that Isaac would be born through Sarah, 9 colon 9. In God's foreknowledge, Isaac was chosen to be the seed of promise, not Ishmael. Not only this, but when Rebekah conceived twins by our, Paul speaks as a Jew, Father Isaac, God chose Jacob while the babies were still in her womb and had done nothing good or evil, 9-11. The Lord told Rebekah that two nations were in her womb, Genesis 25 verse 23. In the next verse, Paul shows that what God said to Rebekah came true 1,400 years later. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Malachi 1 verses 2 and 3. God knew that Esau, the nation of Edom, would not believe him but that Jacob, the nation of Israel, finally would, during the tribulation. God hated the nation of Edom because, one, they did not allow Moses to lead Israel through their land, two, they also asked Israel's enemies to completely raise or wipe them out, PSA. 137,7, and, 3, Edom rejoiced when the Babylonians took Israel captive, Lamb. 422, Joel 3 verse 19, Obadiah. Jeremiah prophesied against Edom, Jah, 49,7-22, and spoke of Jacob, Jah, 51,19, Jacob did not work to receive. The Abrahamic covenant and the seed line to Messiah, God picked him, elected him before he was born. God told Rebekah, the elder shall serve the younger. God often picks the second. God will pour out his fury on the Edomites of Mount Seir at his second coming because they killed his people out of hatred and envy when the Babylonians came against Israel, Mal. 1 colon 2, 3, ISA. 63 colon 1 dash 4, Ezek. 25 colon 14, 35 colon 11. The people of Edom will have a chance to trust Messiah in the kingdom. But, the man Esau also received a blessing from Isaac, Heb. 1120, 9,14-18 What shall we say then is there unrighteousness with God because he picks one people and not another? God orchestrated the seed line from those of his nation by whom the Messiah would come. Now God chose to show mercy to the Gentiles. Was God unrighteous to set Israel aside? Absolutely not. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. 9.15 God decides in his wisdom to whom he will show mercy and compassion on and to harden whom he will. Paul said that the scriptures said to Pharaoh that he was raised up for the purpose that God might show his power and his name be declared in all the earth. Paul uses Moses, Exodus 33 verse 19, and Pharaoh, Exodus 9 verse 16, to show that God can decide to show mercy and compassion on who he wants and to harden who he wants. How did God harden Pharaoh's heart? The fact that Pharaoh's magicians could duplicate some of God's miracles at the beginning of his judgments on Egypt hardened Pharaoh's heart. The ten plagues of Egypt show that God was greater than the gods of Egypt. The worship of the underworld, the sun, the river, and so on, could not save them from frogs, flies, gnats, locusts, boils, disease, hail, fire, darkness, the death of their livestock, or of their firstborn. In the past, God has chosen certain people to serve him such as Noah, Abraham, Moses, Pharaoh, the Twelve, yet Judas betrayed him, and Paul. God will use Antichrist, ISA, 10 colon 5, 6, and Satan, Revelation 20 verse 3, for his purposes. God's purpose in election is to call out two groups of people to live eternally with him, one in heaven and the other on earth. Is God unrighteous in election? No. God is not unrighteous because he has mercy on the Gentiles and is forming a new agency out of them, the body of Christ. God will yet accomplish his purpose and promise to Israel. His purpose is to save two groups of people by the sacrifice of his son, to live in two realms, f. 1 colon 9, 10. God is not unjust because he picks one and not the other. God can dispense grace and mercy as he chooses. God is not unjust because if God did not show mercy to some, then no one would be saved. God used Pharaoh to serve him. God uses Satan to see who loves him. Nobody deserves God's mercy, and no one can condemn God for his choice of forming Israel from the believing remnant. Nor can anyone condemn God for deciding to show mercy to the Gentiles. God hardened Pharaoh and unbelieving Israel. God showed mercy to the Gentiles and the little flock, they will be his holy flock, Isaac. 36 37, 38, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. 
9 colon 19 dash 24 you will ask me then if god picks who he has mercy on how can he find fault with those he hardens who can resist his will no but who are you O man jew that replies against god shall the thing that god formed ask why have you made me this way hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump israel to make one vessel unto honor the believing remnant or peter's group which paul called the israel of god yao 616 to differentiate them from the body of christ and another unto dishonor unbelieving israel what if god willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction the vessels of wrath are the unbelieving gentiles 1 colon 18 32 and the unbelieving jews rom 2 throughout the ages and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory even us whom he hath called not of the jews only but also of the gentiles 9 colon 21 24 god endured the vessels of wrath for the sake of the vessels of mercy even us the body of christ not just the believing remnant of jews peter's group god planned his earthly kingdom afore since adam and eve genesis 1 verses 26 and 27 he will use his kingdom of priests to reclaim the Gentiles in prophecy, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. God chose the body of Christ before the foundation of the world to reclaim heaven for. His glory, F. 1 colon 4. Not only was the little flock saved with more members to join them in the tribulation, but the body of Christ is currently being added to. The thing formed is Israel. Israel was marred in the hand of the potter, Je, 18 colon 4 dash 6, ISA, 1916, God is the potter, the lump is Israel, Israel was an honorable vessel before the fall, but after their fall in Acts 7, they were dishonorable, so God shaped the nation of Israel to be Loami, not my people, Hosea 1 verses 8 to 10, but in the future, after the rapture, the nation of Israel will be a reshaped lump of clay from the believing remnant and they will be called the sons of the living God, Hosea 2 verses 23 and 2 Peter 2 colon 9, 10. After the rapture, God will make the nation of Israel a vessel of honor, preferred nation, out of Peter's group, 9 colon 6, 7, 25 to 33, and the believers added to them during the tribulation. After the tribulation, God will give the kingdom to the believing remnant making the lump and the vessel of 100% pure honor under the new covenant with his spirit in them, Je, 31 colon 31 dash 34, Ezek, 36 colon 24 dash 28, Heb, 8 colon 8. The vessels of mercy are the saved Gentiles and a believing remnant of Israel, 833, 923, 24. Peter's group had been saved into the kingdom on earth, Matt, 1928. But since the Jerusalem Council only Paul's group is accepting new converts into the body of Christ to live in heaven, Acts 15, Gal, 2, 7-9, by God's mercy. Without new converts, Peter's group that existed in Paul's day died out in the first century but more little flock kingdom saints will be added in the tribulation. There is no remnant today because individual Jews today who believe become members of the body of Christ. 9 colon 25 dash 27 And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, Loami, Hosea 1 verses 8 to 10, 2 23, there shall they be called the children of the living God, Peter's group, 9 26. God called the remnant, Peter's group, my people before, during and after the tribulation. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. 1 Peter 2 verses 9 and 10. God has always had a believing remnant, even in Elijah's day. 9 colon 27 dash 29 essays also creeth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved, for he will finish the work, and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Paul quotes Isaiah 1 verse 9 who also said a remnant would be saved. God will make a short work on the earth and will finish the work of finding out who else in Israel will believe in him during the last seven years of Daniel's timeline of 490 years, Dan. 9 colon 24 dash 27 the tribulation, or Jacob's trouble, Je, 30 colon 7. 
God will save more believers into Peter's group at that time and the people who were not called my people, Peter's group, will be called the children of the living God. Jesus Christ will be living on the earth. All people have free will and are saved by faith and receive his son's righteousness. God's purpose in election is to save two different groups of people by two different gospels to live in two different places, heaven and earth. God the Father's ultimate purpose is to exalt his son Jesus Christ in two spheres, f. 1 colon 9, 10. God's purpose in election is to spend about 7,000 years to find out who will live for eternity in heaven and on earth. Paul quotes ISA 10.22 that says that a remnant of Israel will be saved, ISA 4 colon 2 dash 4, Zech 13 colon 8, 9. The context is the tribulation when the Antichrist is trying to convert all of Israel to his false religion. It is important to note this context because there is no remnant of Israel right now since Peter's group was put on hold nearly 2,000 years ago. Why will God cut the work short on earth? The tribulation will only be seven years because except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, Matt. 2400 hours 22. No one would survive. Unless the God of Sabaoth had left us a seed, believing remnant, Israel would have been wiped out like Sodoma and Gomorrah, ISA. 1 colon 9-11 God was not pleased with Israel because of their unbelief and their own religious traditions. God was not unfaithful to Israel, but rather Israel was unfaithful to God. At Christ's second coming, Israel will be in the same condition they were in at Christ's. First coming. His prophesied wrath gets Israel's attention. The believing remnant will have hope in the tribulation because they will know from scripture that God raptured the body of Christ, 2 Thess, 1.10. This is why Jesus said that he will come quickly, Revelation 22 verse 20, not soon. When Israel's time is up, he will return quickly to bring the believers into the kingdom. 9.30-33 What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness, 930, 31. The Gentiles that believe are his elect, 833, Colossians 3 verse 12, Titus 1 verse 1. The Gentiles who did not try to be righteous by keeping the law have attained to righteousness by direct faith in Jesus, but the unbelieving in the nation of Israel who tried to be righteous by keeping the law have not attained to righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in shown a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 932, 33. Paul quotes Isaiah 28 verse 16 for the second time. Why did Israel not receive righteousness? Because Israel did not seek righteousness by faith but by the works of the law, they thought they could keep the law and be righteous on their own, they stumbled on the stumbling stone. They did not recognize that Jesus Christ was the rock, a foundation stone, a tried or tested stone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste, to go to hell, or be ashamed, not be ashamed and go to the fiery furnace, but be saved. Israel did not believe in the stumbling stone, the rock of offense, their own Messiah. It is offensive to mankind that Jesus Christ alone did all the work of salvation. In the future, God will make the believing remnant of Israel into his nation, Matt. 21 colon 42 dash 44, Luke 12 verse 32. Romans 11 verse 13 KJB. Ziza. 13 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Romans chapter 10 Present salvation opportunity for individual Jews. 10 colon 1 dash 3 Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. 10 colon 1, 2. Paul's heart's desire and prayer is that Israel may be saved from their sins by believing the gospel that he preaches. 10 colon 8. Paul said that Israel fell because they went about to establish their own righteousness, but now the Jews can be saved into the body of Christ. Israel is zealous, as Paul was before he was saved, but not according to knowledge of his word. Israel thought she could keep the high standard of the law on her own and earn their way to God. They had no idea of God's perfect high unattainable righteous standard which only the Son of God could keep. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. 10 colon 3. 
Israel went about to establish their own righteousness, not the righteousness of God. In so doing, they did not submit themselves unto the righteousness of God. God's perfect righteousness is received, not achieved, for colon 5. It is the same for believers today if they add any of their own work to the finished work of Jesus Christ, such as water baptism, keeping the law, confessing their sins, they make their faith of none effect, for 14. Because they insult God by saying that what Christ did was not enough and they will not be saved. We should not go about to establish our own righteousness, we trust what Christ has done. Israel did not believe they needed a redeemer because they thought they could keep the law. 10 colon 4 for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth, 10 colon 4. Paul does not say Christ is the end of the law, but that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. If Israel had believed they would have received Christ's righteousness. The Son kept God's law perfectly, PSA. 40 colon 8, Jesus Christ is the answer to receiving absolute perfect imputed righteousness. A saved person has believed and a lost person has either not heard the gospel or heard it and not believed it, rejected it. It is his righteousness that is needed. Faith in him is the way to receive his righteousness. In the future dispensation, Israel will call the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord our righteousness, Je 23, 6. But Jews in this dispensation can be saved by believing Paul's gospel, 3, 21-26. 10 colon 5 Paul quotes Leviticus. 18 colon 5 For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Moses said that if you keep all the law all the time you will be righteous. James 2 verse 10 No human that has inherited the sin nature from Adam can keep the law. 5 12 If Israel kept God's law they could be his kingdom of priests, but Israel did not keep the law, so they could not be his kingdom of priests. Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6 they made the golden calf while Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments, Exodus 32 verse 4. But in the future, under the new covenant, they will be able to keep his laws and be his priests. Paul told the Jews in Antioch of Pisidia that they could be justified by faith. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus, God's Son, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Acts 13 verses 38 and 39. 10 6-8 Paul compares the righteousness of the law with the righteousness that is by faith. The righteousness which God requires is found by faith in the gospel we preach. What does the word of God say? Paul said, to have the righteousness which is of faith, do not say in your heart that you need to ascend to heaven to find it, that is to bring Christ down from above, or that you need to descend into the deep, hell, Jonah 2 verses 2 and 3, that is to bring Christ up from the dead, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, which we, Paul, preach, Deuteronomy. 30 colon 11 dash 14. Paul said you do not have to go anywhere, Christ is found in God's word, to have his righteousness just believe the gospel we preach. Christ has already come from heaven and risen from the grave just believe what we preach. Israel knew they had to obey Moses, and now they are to obey Paul. There is no need to seek after God some mystical way. 10 colon 9, 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, he is Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved from the consequences of your sins. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession, the decision to believe is made in the heart. Believe that Jesus Christ really is the Son of God who died for your sins and that God really did raise him from the dead is made unto salvation. There is no need for an audible public confession salvation is between the individual and God who knows the thoughts of our minds and hearts. Paul never says we are to confess Jesus Christ before men, we confess or communicate to God that we believe. No public confession is necessary. When Christ speaks about a public confession in Matthew 10 verse 32, he is referring to the remnant of Israel during the tribulation confessing his name before the followers of Antichrist. In 1 John 1 verse 9, the nation of Israel is to confess their sin of killing their Messiah and God will forgive them and cleanse the nation at his second coming. God sees our heart and wants to see our heart resting in the finished work of Christ. These verses do not expressly say Christ's death for our sins, but saved, saved from hellfire, sin's consequence. Paul specifically says that Christ died for our sins and rose in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, therefore those verses should be used in conjunction with the verses when witnessing to the lost. Knowing the facts does not save us, we have to believe the gospel in our hearts. 
10 colon 11 dash 13 Paul quotes Joel and applies it to this present time. For the scripture saith, whosoever, anyone, believeth on him shall not be ashamed, never be disappointed. Paul quotes Joel 2 verse 32. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, Gentiles, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There was no difference between those who sinned, 323, now there is no difference in salvation for those that believe Paul's gospel. Paul says that God is rich to both Jews and Gentiles that call. Upon him, imputing the righteousness of his son to them in this dispensation when they believe what Lord Jesus has done. God is currently extending mercy and will save any sinner that believes the gospel. 10 colon 14 dash 17 Israel has heard the preaching of Jesus Christ by the believing remnant, Peter's group, but Israel did not all obey, believe, that gospel of the kingdom. The feet of those who preach the gospel are beautiful because they proclaim the gospel of peace that has the power to save the lost. How then shall they, Israel, call on him in whom they have not believed? For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? 10 14, 15, ISA, 53 colon 1. In Isaiah's day, in Christ's earthly ministry, and today, people should hear and believe our report. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 1017, 10, 18-21 Paul proves that God was righteous to set unbelieving Israel aside. Israel heard Christ preached during Acts first by Peter's group, and then Paul. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. Peter's group provoked the nation to jealousy and anger because they thought them foolish to think that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. The no people and a foolish nation will be the nation in the kingdom, Deuteronomy. 32 colon 21. But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. 1020, Paul quotes ISA, 65 colon 1. The believing remnant did not ask for him, but found Messiah. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. 1021, Paul quotes Isaiah 65 verse 2. But apostate disobedient arguing Israel would not come into his open arms. Israel did not believe Peter's group, but individual Jews can be saved into the body of Christ. Please see one year extension of mercy for Israel in the appendix. Romans chapter 11 has God cast away his people? Paul explains Israel's blindness in part during this dispensation. Has God cast away his people now that God is showing mercy to the Gentiles? Who is the wild olive tree that is grafted into the good olive tree? For I speak to you Gentiles, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Romans 11 verses 13 and 17. The Gentiles are the wild olive tree because Gentiles is the antecedent of the pronoun thou, the wild olive tree. Notice it is the Gentiles, not the body of Christ that are grafted in. God is dispensing grace during Israel's national blindness, 2 Cor. 519 F. 3 colon 2, Jesus is the root, 15 12, and the fatness is the oil, spirit. 11 colon 1 inch I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. 11 colon 1. Now that God is showing mercy to the Gentiles, has God cast away his people? God has not cast away his people because he saved Peter's group and he saved Paul an Israelite, and they can be saved in his new dispensation of grace, just as Paul was saved. Paul committed the unpardonable blasphemy of the Holy Ghost by rejecting the renewed offer of the Holy Ghost-filled Messianic Kingdom saints, Peter's group, by consenting to the stoning death of Stephen, Israel's last straw, Matt. 1231, 32, Acts 7, 58, 22, 20. Paul vehemently persecuted the little flock and tried to stamp them out, Gal. 123, Acts 8, 1, 9, 1, 26, 11. Since Paul could not be saved in this world, neither in the world to come, Matt. 1231, 32, Heb. 2, 5, God saved him into a new world or dispensation, 1 Cor. 9, 27, F. 3, 2, Colossians 1, verse 25. 
11 colon 2 10 God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias? How he mocketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and digged down thine. Altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. 11 colon 2, 3. God foreknew the body of Christ, 829, and he foreknew Peter's group, Gal. 2 colon 7 9. God foreknew he would have a saved nation on earth, and God foreknew that the body of Christ would live in heaven, 824, but he did not predetermine who would be saved. As in Elias' day when God had a remnant of 7,000, there is a remnant, Peter's group, according to election of God's grace, not works. They were elected to serve by God's grace and were still alive when Paul wrote this letter, 11 colon 5. And if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work, 11 colon 6. Election for service is by God's grace, not works. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he, not she, seeketh for, righteousness, but the election, little flock, hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear winky face unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back, burdened with sin, alway. Paul quotes PSA. 69 colon 23, ISA. 29 colon 9, 10. Peter's group was saved, and the rest of Israel were blinded. The prophets foretold the blinding of the apostate on of Israel. All the privileges God gave his nation A.L. be me a snare, a trap, and a stumbling block to him. He is to be paid back for his unbelief. 11, 11, 12 Paul explains Israel's temporary fall and casting away. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their false salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. 11, 11, the fall and rising again of many in Israel and his wrath to come was prophesied, Luke 2, 24, 3 colon 7, but not the mystery. Now God's favor to the Gentiles in mystery causes the Jews to be jealous so that they may be saved in this new dispensation. Israel stumbled at the cross and then fell in Acts 7 when the religious leaders who represented the nation rejected their Messiah by stoning Stephen to death because they wanted to take the nation for themselves. By force, PSA. 2 colon 3, Matt 11 12, Luke 19 verse 14, Acts 7 verses 51 to 60. The nation committed the unforgivable blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, Matt 12 31, 32, at the end of their one year extension of mercy, Luke 13 verses 6 to 9. Christ also prayed on the cross, Father forgive them, Luke 23 verse 34. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? 11.12, through Israel's fall, all the world has a salvation opportunity during the dispensation of grace and access to God without having to go through Israel. The Gentiles can believe directly in what Jesus Christ has done. Can you imagine how many Gentiles will be saved when Israel rises, fullness? There are two different fullnesses. Israel fell from being God's preferred nation and diminished during Acts. The little flock were placed on hold and agreed not to take any new converts at the Jerusalem Council and they died off in the first century, Acts 15, Gal. 2 colon 7 9. Gentiles have received riches, the chance to receive his imputed righteousness and eternal life in heaven. Unbelieving Israel rejected the Holy Ghost-filled remnant of believers, Peter's group, and then they rejected the Holy Spirit-filled Paul, Acts 13 46, 18 colon 6, 28 colon 28. Paul's frequent visits to the synagogues during Acts were to notify the lost Jews of God's dispensational shift and that they now needed to be saved through his ministry. Israel has fallen temporarily, but God will resume his dealing with them. How much more glorious will their future rise to glory be when the nation is saved at Christ's return? Israel will then evangelize the Gentiles in the millennial kingdom, Matt 28 colon 19, 20. 11 colon 13 dash 15 for I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them, 11 13, 14. 
Paul speaks to the Gentiles and magnifies his office of being the apostle of the Gentiles to provoke the Jews to want to be like the believing Gentiles, so he can save some of them into the body of Christ. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be, but life from the dead? 11.15, The World Now Has a Salvation Opportunity The Father is reconciled to the world through the cross, 2 Cor. 519, but not all the people have believed and been reconciled to him. But at Christ's second coming to earth to Israel, the kingdom saints will be resurrected from the dead. They and the tribulation saints will receive glorified bodies with his spirit in them, ISA. 60 1-3, 11-16-24 Paul uses the analogy of the olive tree. The doors of the temple were made of the olive tree, 1 Kings 6 verses 31-33, there is a green olive tree, Jah. 11, 16, 17, and two olive trees empty their golden oil by themselves through seven pipes to keep the seven lamps on top of the candlestick burning perpetually, eternally, in Zechariah 4. Therefore, the olive tree seems to represent access to God and the opportunity for eternal life. God has set Israel aside because of their unbelief in the cornerstone Jesus Christ and their preference for their vain religious system. For if the first fruit be holy, the believing remnant, Peter's group, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches, that receive righteousness. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, the Gentiles, not the body of Christ, being a wild olive tree, work grafted among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, the root is Jesus Christ, 15.12, Rev 5, 5 22.16, from whom flows fatness, oil, Holy Ghost, righteousness. The good olive tree is the opportunity to have access to God and eternal life by faith like Abraham, for colon 5, Gal. 3.14, Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Gentiles should not boast, thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. The Gentiles will say Israel was broken off so I could be grafted in, well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standeth by faith. The Gentiles that believe become members of the body of Christ. Israel was broken off because of their unbelief. If you Gentiles believe then you will stand before God. Be not high-minded, but fear, for if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Do not get high-minded but fear, and be warned otherwise God may decide not to spare you, behold therefore the Goodness and severity of God, on them which fell, severity, unbelieving Israel is accursed, separated from God, but toward thee, Gentiles, not the body of Christ, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. When Gentiles return to globalism the rapture cuts off this dispensation. And they, Israel, also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. If Israel does not stay unbelieving then God is able to graft them in again. Observe how severe God was on unbelieving Israel, but good toward the Gentiles if you continue in his goodness, otherwise your salvation opportunity will be cut off. The rapture cuts off the opportunity to be saved to live in heaven. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature, not cultivated, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? 11 colon 16 24. Usually, a good branch is grafted in but in this case, an inferior wild branch was grafted into the olive tree. Will not the grafting in of the natural branches into their own olive tree be easier? God will graft in the kingdom saints that believe during the tribulation and add them to Peter's group. 1125 For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Paul would not have the Gentile believers to be ignorant of the mystery of Israel's blindness in part so they do not get wise in their own conceits. Your own conceits is to think you are someone you are not because you are not Israel. Do not be conceited, your chance will not last forever. God has a plan for Israel. God blinded them for their unbelief, not because you were great. God has postponed Israel's program and inserted the dispensation of grace. Israel has been blinded temporarily in part. Peter's group was saved by God until the rapture. The fullness of the Gentiles is when the purpose for which we were saved is full. We will be ready to serve God in our resurrected glorified bodies. Philosophy. 321, with his spirit and our.
soul in them. The blinding of Eli Moss, the false Jewish prophet, for a season while a Gentile was saved by Apostle Paul is a type of Israel at the present time, Acts 13 verses 6 to 12. 11 colon 26 dash 29 and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written there shall come out of Shaun the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins 11 26 27 Paul quotes Isaiah 59 verses 20 and 21 God has not cast away his people permanently because he has a future plan for them and he will return as he promised Ja 33 colon 40 dash 42 all believing Israel will have their national sins taken away at Christ's second coming, 1 Peter 1 verses 5 and 7, 13. At that time, God will put his spirit and word in believing Israel under the new covenant. We are not spiritual Israel and we have not replaced Israel because God has a future plan for the Israel of God, Gal. 616, for this reason, replacement theology and covenant theology are false. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Fathers sakes. 1 Thess 2.15 Unbelieving Jews object against God turning to the Gentiles through Apostle Paul and deny that God considers them to be as uncircumcised Gentiles, Acts 7 verse 51. God had elected Israel to be his kingdom of priests, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, on earth. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6 But now, the saved Gentiles are his peculiar people, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Titus 2 verse 14, He will not utterly cast her away, Leviticus. 26 colon 44, God loves Israel for their father's sake, he will not change his mind, he keeps promises, Ja. 31 to 31 dash 34, to a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. 11 colon 30 dash 32 for God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all, 1132. In times past, the Gentiles did not believe God, but now the Gentiles have received mercy, f. 2 colon 11 dash 13, because of Israel's unbelief. Even so, Israel does not believe now, but by God's mercy to the Gentiles, Israel may obtain mercy. In his grace, God's present purpose in the dispensation of grace, f. 3 colon 1 dash 9, is to give everyone an opportunity for eternal life in heaven. Jews can be saved into the body of Christ. God hath concluded Jews and Gentiles all in unbelief during the dispensation of grace so that he might have mercy upon all. 11 colon 33 dash 36 o the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen, 11 colon 33 dash 36. Paul breaks out in a jubilant prayer of thankfulness to God for his brilliant and merciful plan to save as many people as possible. He is amazed that although Israel has fallen, the Jews still have a chance to be saved into the body of Christ. No one can plummet the depth of the wisdom and knowledge of our God. His thinking and decisions are past our ability to discover his ways or find out. Who has known the excellent, incredible, perfect mind of the Lord? Has anyone counseled him what to do? Who has first given to him and then been paid back by him? God is a giver. The Gentiles will have another chance to be saved in the kingdom. Paul praises God and wants all glory to be his forever. Amen. Asterisk the nation of Israel has stumbled, fallen, 1111, 12, is cast away, 1115, blind in part, 1125, and enemies for your sakes, 1128, if the Gentiles have replaced Israel as spiritual Israel then we are all those things, which does not make sense. When I surveyed the wondrous cross by Isaac Watts, 1707, when I surveyed the Wandrouse cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. 
All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet? Were thorns composed so rich a crown? His dying crimson, like a robe, spreads o'er his body on the tree, then am I dead to all the globe, and all the globe is dead to me. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all.